So now, in this lecture, we will be dealing regarding the conservation principle and governing equation of flow. So our topic for today's lecture will be conservation principle and governing equation of flow. Fine. So, in this, we will be dealing basically with three equations. First one is your continuity equation, second one is your energy equation and the last one is your momentum equation. So, let me write first of all, first one is your continuity equation. Second one is your energy equation. And the last one is your momentum equation. We will deal it one by one. Fine. Now, what is happening is first of all, we will deal the first one that is continuity equation. This equation, I think this is very much familiar to you, but still continuity equation. Now, could you tell me, I am not interested in expression as for now, just tell me what is this continuity equation from where do you get the continuity equation or what is the basic principle behind the continuity equation, come on, just tell me fast from where do you get this continuity equation. Now, what is happening? This continuity equation is a statement of law of conservation of matter. This continuity equation is based on the statement of what? Law of conservation of matter. Law of conservation of matter. Fine. Now, what is the basic principle behind this law of conservation of matter? It is simple, you have already encountered it that is mass can neither be created nor be destroyed. So, the basic principle for this law of conservation of matter is that mass can neither be created nor be destroyed. This is the basic principle. Fine. Now, could you tell me for study flow, for the case of study flow, what will be your continuity equation? Come on. You have already heard I think so because in FM you generally deal with this. A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. This is your continuity equation for study flow. This one was something you have already, I hope you have already studied somewhere or the other. But now, the topic starts from here that for spatially varied study flow, for the case of spatially varied study flow, I am interested in getting a expression. I will draw a diagram. See, whenever it is not that I am teaching and you are just listening and all, if I am writing something a heading, your brain starts to work quickly at that instant that what could be the diagrammatic representation, how could we derive rather than just watching what I will be doing, fine. So now, what happens is, this is something your flow, fine. I will take three different sections. Let us suppose first is here, second is here and third is here. Fine. Let us name this one as Q1, this as Q, this section and this section as Q2. Fine. Now, let us first name the 
distance also. This distance is L and this distance is <coughs> X. Fine. Now, since first of all, is this diagram according to the derivation, sorry, according to the topic heading which I have written, is it correct or not? Come on, tell me. Is it spatially varied study flow? If it is the case of spatially varied study flow, as I told you it's spatially varied. In non-uniform flow, introduction to open channel flow, we have already, I have already told you, spatially varied occurs whenever there is an addition of discharge or whenever there is a subtraction of discharge. So here, let us suppose what is happening, just a second, this is leaking. Now what is happening is, there is addition of discharge at that is at this point of time, you can see that there is an addition of discharge, name it as Q dash. This Q dash is basically discharge per unit width, discharge per unit width. You haven't come across till now what is discharge per unit weight. So let me tell you, this is important because as we will be proceeding further, this term Q dash discharge per unit weight or Q, it's my denotion. I used Q dash, you can use Q, whatever you like, fine. So this discharge per unit width you will be using often. But as for now, I'll tell you this Q dash, it can be Q also, but this small Q is equal to the total discharge divided by the width. If not for here, I am just talking about any discharge per unit width. That is your total discharge divided by the width. This is your discharge per unit width. Fine. So now, just by looking at the diagram, could you tell me that if I am interested at getting the discharge at a section Q with respect to Q1, what it would be? I repeat again, try to frame the expression by yourself, fine, because this sort of quest question has already been asked in your gate examination, fine. So just try to frame the expression. If I am interested in getting the discharge at point Q inter at this section, fine, in terms of Q1, what will be the discharge? So now let us see. At a point Q, what will be happening? You will be getting a discharge of Q1. So yes, you will be getting a discharge of Q1 plus this Q dash is the additional discharge which is also coming its this portion, fine. So plus Q dash. But this Q dash is your discharge per unit width. So for getting the discharge, you have to multiply by the width. So here, what is that? X. So, Q dash into X. Fine. So now, what is happening is Q dash into S that is the uh, that is at point this section where the discharge Q was there. So, Q you have written in terms of Q1 and Q dash into X. Now, what is happening is now I am interested in getting discharge at point Q2 with respect to the discharge at point Q1. So I can write Q2 is equal to, what I will be getting it, Q1, obviously I will be getting Q1, but at this portion I am having what? I am having an additional discharge and that additional discharge is your Q dash. It is acting up to what? Up to the point L, up to this whole from here to here your distance L. So what I will be getting? Q dash into L. So I got the expression for Q, I got the expression for Q2 in terms of Q1. Now could you tell me if I want the expression for Q2 in terms of Q, I want the expression of Q2 in terms of Q, what I will be getting? Till this section I am having a discharge of how much? Q. And from here, the additional discharges from this point 
to this point there is additional discharge of q dash up to this position that is l minus this is the l this is x so l minus x so i will be multiply it by q dash into l minus x fine so this are the expression you which you can get this i just told you so that if any questions like this comes for your spatially varied flow you will be able to do now just tell me in case of addition of discharge in case of addition of discharge what will be the differential equation if i am asking you simply in case of addition of discharge what will be the expression so you can write that del q by del x is equal to plus q dash this is your expression in case of addition of discharge similarly in case of subtraction of discharge you have del q by del x is equal to minus q dash fine in case of addition it is plus q dash while in case of subtraction of discharge it is minus q dash this you got for spatially varied study flow just look at one thing when i discuss regarding the study flow there was nothing with the time the time we what you do is flow parameters with respect to time was constant fine so this was the continuity equation in that we studied for spatially varied study flow now coming to unstudy flow for unstudy so now look at the diagram which i am drawing initially this is the channel bed initially the water surface elevation was something like this at any instant t the water surface elevation was this water surface elevation at instant now what is happening suppose at this point you are getting the discharge of q1 this is your discharge q1 now what is happening at t plus delta t time the amount of water withdrawn that is the outflow is greater than the inflow then what will happen this curve what will happen this curve will shift down so what i'll be getting is this is your water surface elevation at t plus delta t time fine here you were getting q1 here you are getting it as q2 this is your distance of delta x fine so initially water surface elevation at instant t was this now what is happening q2 is greater than q1 because of that what is happening a drawdown will occur so now can you tell me this excess rate of discharge the rate of discharge which is excess will lead to what this excess rate of discharge will lead to the depletion of storage the net storage which was happening if the outflow was less than in uh, inflow that won't occur and there will be depletion in the rate of storage so can i write that excess rate of discharge is equal to negative because there will be depletion that is rate of depletion of storage fine so now 
tell me the expression that if there is an excess rate of discharge just for uh, your simplicity I can draw at uh, any section you can see here the depth is y and you take any elemental section for this section I am only telling you that you can take I will hatch this portion. The depth of this portion is basically your dy and the area is dA this is your top width. Now just first of all look at this figure looking at this can you tell me what is the area if your area is dA and I want the expression in terms of T and dy but you can say this is the top width and this is the depth. So, can I write the area as T into dy of course right. So, dA is equal to T into dy. Now, coming back to this equation excess rate of discharge. So, can I write it in the form of del Q by del X excess rate of discharge at time what delta T. So, del X is the distance in that distance this is happening this there will be a downfall that is excess rate of discharge happens. So, del X into del T negative rate of depletion of storage. So, what is happening if this is the cross sectional area A if it is the cross sectional area A. So, there will be a depletion of storage. So, what you will be getting? del A by del T because it is happening with respect to time at water surface elevation at any instant T plus delta T. Initially just by looking at the figure you can say initially water surface elevation at instant T because of the delta T time there has been a depletion of storage. So, del A by del T and here also you will get it as delta X to delta T fine. So, now we solve this and get an end result that is del x into del t. Now, could I write this del a instead of this del t can I write like this del a by del y into del y by del t into del x into del t. Can I write in this form? Of course, I can right in the form of delta t I have just written del a by del y into del y by delta t fine. So, now could I replace something from this expression I am giving you a hint from this side can you replace something which you already know come on. If you see here you can see that d a by d y is equal to your top width wetted area by what depth of flow. So, this is your top width. So, here in place of d a by d y can I write t I can. So, del q by del x into delta x into delta t is equal to minus t del y by del t into delta x delta t fine. Now, what I can do I can shift this side on the left hand side. So, that negative sign will become plus del q by del x plus t del y by del t into delta x into delta t is equal to 0. Is this expression right? Now, this expression will go also here and will be that will be 0. So, del q by del x plus t del y by del t is equal to 0. You got this result fine. This is the case of your non uniform flow. Now, if I am telling you that the flow is spatially varied unsteady flow. The flow is spatially varied unsteady flow. Could you modify this expression for me? Come on. 
you can write that del q by del x plus t del y by del t is equal to plus minus q dash. This is your expression for spatially varied unsteady flow because there will be either an addition of uh, discharge or there will be a subtraction of discharge. So, for spatially varied unsteady flow just look at the expression when there was no uh, unsteady flow when the flow was steady you did not got this expression try to compare and study fine. So, you see you did not got this expression, but now for the unsteady flow you got this expression into picture fine. So, this expression was is important and similarly this two expression that in case of subtraction of discharge and in case of addition of discharge what is the end result which you get fine. So, here we completed regarding the energy equation. Now, I hope this one is very much clear to you better it this you just write it once and whatever things which I just mark it in a box you also do it because what happens is at the end when you are preparing for gate examination like when you are doing revision. So, it is not possible for you that you will be able to study all the things again, but what are the uh, things which you have marked with different color pens in specific blocks at least when you will turn the pages at the very last instant you will be able to recall that things fine. So, it is better use at least 2 to 3 color pens and mark these important things. Now, coming to the second one that is your energy equation. Now, regarding this energy equation I already told you when we dealt with the head part energy per unit weight of the fluid with respect to datum which was your head. I hope you remember right do revisions properly. So, now what is happening is if there is a flow taking place this and this. So, what you got was this diagram now I think you are familiar with this one was your what this one was your z1 this one is your y1 that is your pressure head and this one is your kinetic head fine. This portion you will have z2, here you will have y2 and here you will have v2 square by 2g. Now, you will see there will be a certain head loss which will be occurring fine. So, now at section 1 and at section 2 if I tell you to apply the Bernoulli's equation could you tell me what you will get come on if I tell you to apply Bernoulli's equation at section 1 and section 2 what you will get. So, first let me write applying Bernoulli's equation at section 1 and 2. What you will get? Z1 plus Y1 plus V1 square by 2G is equal to Z2 plus Y2 plus V2 square by 2G plus H L. Fine. Now, two things which I will tell you listen to it very carefully. If this pressure head would be at some inclination let us suppose this was your y1. If this was not your y1 and this would have been your y1 and this was an angle theta. So, in this case you would have got the y1 as y1 cos theta fine in this case you would have got it y1 cos theta. Similarly, if you would have applied an energy correction factor 
that is kinetic energy correction factor then what you would have got z1 was there initially you would have got y1 cos theta plus here you would have got alpha v1 square by 2g this alpha is your kinetic energy correction factor now what is this kinetic energy correction factor you don't have to worry when we will be dealing regarding the velocity distribution part after these coming lectures you will be able to understand what is this kinetic energy correction factor fine so if the it would have been an inclination y1 then you would have written y1 cos theta but as for now y1 plus v1 square by 2g is equal to z2 plus y2 plus v2 square by 2g now in the next chap chapter we will be dealing regarding what regarding the uniform flow so let us suppose if the flow would have been uniform if the flow is uniform i already told you the diagrammatic representation your y1 will be equal to y2 fine you will be getting v1 is equal to v2 for uniform flow so what you will be getting z1 is equal to z2 plus hl that is your head loss so can you get it from here head loss is equal to z1 minus z2 fine or you can also write head loss is equal to total energy upstream minus total energy downstream this is a simplified version if the flow is non uniform also then also total energy z1 plus y1 plus v1 square by 2g this is on the upstream side while on the downstream side you have z2 plus y2 plus v2 square by 2g so total energy upstream minus total energy downstream and for uniform flow you got head loss is equal to z1 minus z2 you don't have to worry for uniform flow i'll tell you once again so here as for now you write this and the main result is head loss is equal to total energy upstream minus total energy downstream now when you are deriving this energy equation what is happening there are certain assumptions which you have to take the certain assumptions which is to be encountered so first assumption is that the flow is one dimensional and it is steady fine while deriving this equation i told you regarding based on conceptualizing the flow as 1d 2d or 3d so while we are talking regarding the energy equation you will take it as flow to be one dimensional so i'll write it here following assumptions are taken while deriving energy equation while deriving your energy equation what is the first one i told you flow is assumed to be one dimensional flow is assumed to be one dimensional and steady fine the second assumption is the effect of curvature what curve the effect of curvature on hydrostatic pressure distribution now what is happening you know that there is only water which is applying the pressure which is applying the force so the pressure which is encountered is your hydrostatic pressure so the effect of curvature which occurs on hydrostatic pressure distribution it is neglected so i can write the effect of curvature on hydrostatic pressure distribution is neglected 
third and last assumption is which I already told you when it was the first class of your introduction to open channel flow that generally when we are dealing with open channel flow we focus that, that the channel is prismatic. So here we assume that the channel is prismatic and the bed slope is very small that is if I have written y1 cos theta and theta is very small tends to 0. So cos 0 is what 1 so you can write y1 cos theta is what y1. So we can say that channel is prismatic and slope is very small. So come on write these all the three uh, write all these three points, write all these three assumptions because if any of the assumptions if had been asked four assumptions they have given three statements basically not four, three statements and they can ask that which of the following statements are correct while deriving energy equation. So you should be familiar what are the basically assumptions which we take while deriving your energy equation. Fine. So here we completed regarding the continuity equation your energy equation. Now we will move to the third one that is your momentum equation. This momentum equation is also very simple provided you should be clear with the concepts then also I will tell you you will be able to solve. So now put the heading as momentum equation, put the heading as momentum equation. So third one is your momentum equation. Now basically what is your momentum, how you, <coughs> sorry, how you get momentum, what happens is rate of change of linear momentum is equal to your external force applied. This principle is based on Newton's second law of motion. So let me write this first, rate of change of linear momentum. Now this rate of change of linear momentum is equal to external force applied. Fine. So now shall I draw a diagram for this to explain you the expression which we will be getting. Now let us take this push section and this section. What will be happening? A pressure force will be acting at this section and because of it you would have studied in your geotech if not there is no issue this is the hydrostatic pressure distribution which will be occurring both on the upstream side as well as on the downstream side. So here also fine. Now what is happening is let us name that P1 is the pressure force which is occurring at this point. Similarly, P2 is the pressure force which is occurring at section 2. Now if we take any, uh, any control volume at this section, suppose this is the weight W which is acting vertically downwards. I will resolve this into two components that is then inclination theta you will get w cos theta and here you will get it as w sin theta fine this much is clear to you now obviously when the flow is occurring in this direction from upstream to downstream 
they will be a frictional force which will be acting. So, frictional force which will be acting is F F. Now, I hope all these what I have labeled this is clear to you. So, now P1 is the pressure force, P2 is also the pressure force, W was the weight, I resolved it into two components that is W cos theta and W sin theta. Along with it there was a frictional force which was acting opposite to the direction of flow because it is the resistance which has been offered. Now looking to the definition rate of change of linear momentum is equal to external force applied. It is also written in books that algebraic sum of all external forces is equal to your rate of change of linear momentum. So now if there is a change in momentum that is the change in momentum is equal to m2 minus m1 this is your change in momentum fine. Now I am interested in getting the external forces. Let us assume that this direction to be positive you can take any one there is no issue you can take this direction as positive and write the, all the forces according to it. I will take this one as positive this direction of flow. So P1 is the pressure force then what I have in this direction I have W sin theta. So plus W sin theta. Now I have this P2 in the opposite direction. So I can write minus P2. Similarly this frictional force is also acting opposite to the direction of flow. So I can write minus F. Fine this is the expression. Now I want to get an end results in a concise manner. So now let us try to reduce the expression. Come on tell me if P1 is the pressure force so can I write pressure force as pressure into area of course we can. So pressure force is equal to pressure into area. Now you have already know that pressure is rho g h. So in place of rho g I can write gamma and this pressure acts at a center of pressure. So suppose if this is a rectangular channel section which has a depth y. So what you can do it z bar is equal to y by 2 because this is a vertical channel uh, vertical channel sections fine and y is the vertical distance measured from channel bottom to top surface of water. So this y by 2 will give you the HCP which you say that is the pressure which is acting at the center of pressure fine. So now you can write gamma z1 bar because I am taking it at section 1. So rho g h in place of rho g I have written gamma z1 bar into area a1. See I am not writing that a1 is the area at section 1, z1 is the center of pressure at section 1, z2 at section 2 this is understood fine. So this is gamma z1 bar a1. So now we will substitute all the values I will write p2 also first. p2 is equal to gamma z2 bar a2. Now what is your momentum? If I want to get the expression for momentum, we have already studied this momentum when you were in 9, 10 standard in your physics. So momentum is equal to, you know that momentum is equal to mass into velocity. Now if I am telling that it is mass flow rate. I am talking m dot we denoted by m dot mass flow rate. So what I will be getting is mass flow rate I am talking so just I will tell you first let me write this mass flow rate. So could you tell me what will be the dimension if I am talking regarding the mass I will get the unit as kg but I am talking regarding the mass flow rate so I should get the dimension in kg per second or the units in 
kg per second. So now this mass flow rate if it if I write it as rho into q is it right? You can check with the dimensioning that is kg per meter cube into meter cube per second. What you will see meter cube meter cube will get cancelled out you will get mass flow rate in kg per second fine. So now you can write mass flow rate as rho q and velocity as v fine. Now for m1 you can write it as rho q v1 because the charge is constant m2 is equal to rho q v2 fine. So you got m1 and m2 you got p1 and p2. So we will substitute all these first let me write the expression again p1 plus w sin theta minus p2 minus frictional force is equal to m2 minus m1. Now just one thing more look at the expression here come on look at the expression if I tell you that the channel bed is horizontal there is no frictional force which is acting and if the channel bed was at a certain inclination there is no inclination here when if uh, there would be an inclination theta if I am talking regarding suppose there could be an inclination of theta here. So I am telling that there is no inclination the channel bed is horizontal and frictionless in that case what will happen assume the channel bed is horizontal and frictionless frictionless so what will happen is it's frictionless basically it's frictionless so what will happen is if the channel bed is horizontal then theta is 0. So sin w sin theta will be 0 you know that right and if there is no friction force which is acting then obviously your friction force will also be 0. So we will substitute all the values here first of all p1 minus p2 is equal to m2 minus m1. Now in place of P1 we will write what gamma Z1 bar A1. So I will write gamma Z1 bar A1 minus gamma Z2 bar A2 and your momentum I can write it as M2 as rho Q V2 minus rho Q V1. So now take out common things which you are getting here you can see you have rho q as common you will get v2 minus v1 here you can take out gamma as common so gamma is common you are getting a1 z1 bar minus a2 z2 bar now this gamma you can write it in the form of rho g so yes let me write it here only i can write gamma as rho g fine so what will happen this row this row will get cancelled out what I can get it as a1 z1 bar minus a2 z2 bar is equal to q by g v2 minus v1 fine now I will erase this this lack of space. Solve after this till the time I erase this portion. You can solve. I will give you a hint. In place of V2, you can substitute in terms of discharge and area. Now, what you will see is moving from here, you know that Q is equal to A1, V1. So, in place of V1, you can write q upon a1 similarly in place of u v2 you can write q upon a2 fine so let us substitute the values here a1 z1 bar is equal minus 
a 2 z 2 bar is equal to q by g q by a 2 minus q divided by a fine if I am solving it a 1 z 1 bar I will bring that q square g a 1 this side I can get this negative will become plus. So, q square g a 1 is equal to a 2 z 2 bar plus q square g a 2. I have not written that I will multiply with the brackets and then transposing this is understood I skipped one step fine. So, this is the momentum equation. So, this a 1 z 1 bar plus q square g a 1 this one this is known as your specific force. This we will study in detail and we will solve numericals also, but as for now the specific force is a 1 z 1 bar or you can simply say that a z bar plus q square g a which is constant and this is your specific force. Fine. If I will be told to write a definition for specific force. So, how can I do that? You have come across this portion right when you assume that the channel bed is horizontal and frictionless you got P1 minus P2 is equal to your M2 minus M1. So, now if I write it as P1 minus P2 is equal to M2 minus M1. So, now what will happen is if this M1 is shifted this side and P2 has gone to right hand side. So, P1 plus M1 is equal to P2 plus M2. Now, if I divide both the sides by gamma, so what I will get? P1 plus M1 divided by gamma is equal to P2 plus M2 divided by gamma. Fine. Now, this is also your specific force because exactly the same thing you just substituted the values and you got this result. You could have done it this way also. This is also your specific force. Now, if I am told to say what is the specific force and to tell the statement form in a statement form what is this specific force. I can say specific force is the sum of pressure force and momentum flux per unit weight fine. So, I can say specific force it is the sum of pressure force and momentum flux per unit weight fine just one more thing which I it came to my mind I am writing it here P1 minus P2 but I am telling you this is your pressure force in some books you will find it as F1 minus M F2 fine. So, they are taking they are designating in place of P1 they are taking it F1 and I am taking it as P1. So, it does not uh, cause any issue here it depends upon what denotion you are taking it is not mandatory that you have to take P1 it depends upon your choice the meaning should be clear to you fine. So, I hope this results this end results what you got the specific force how to define it everything is very much clear to you and all the three equations which we dealt it is also very much clear to you fine. So, now open your booklet we will see question number 2 chapter 1 MCQ and NAT question. So, question number 2 MCQ and NAT question. So, now let us look at the question study flow occurs in an open channel with lateral inflow of q meter q per second per unit width as shown in the figure. The mass conservation equation is. So, what diagram you have been given first see this draw the figure. 
this is exactly a figure this portion the discharge was q meter cube per second and this is flowing in this direction there has been an additional discharge of q meter cube per second per meter fine now you have been asked you have been given the four equations and you have to tell the mass conservation equation so basically this is a concept based on continuity equation fine and this is for your study flow so for study flow as you can see the equation is given by del q by del x is equal to plus q this is this is plus q this happens when when since it is a spatially varied flow there is an addition of discharge fine in this particular case fine and since there is an addition of discharge we are writing it as plus q and this q is your discharge per unit width similarly if there would be has been a withdrawn of some amount of discharge i should have written it here negative because there would have been subtraction of discharge so for this case if i'll write it del q by del x this plus q coming on the left hand side will become minus q is equal to 0 so this will be your mass conservation equation so if i see the option option c that is del q by del x minus q is equal to 0 that is option c will be your right answer for this given question thank you